how imperialism still impacts the world that we live in today. First, we're going to start out by looking at imperialism's legacies. Now, some people argue that they're not all bad. For example, China, in which many European nations had a sphere of influence, uh, and the U.S., China is very prosperous. India is very prosperous as well. As a matter of fact, they both have two of the world's fastest growing economies to this day. However, if you take a look at Africa, and you look at the scramble for Africa, and you look at the artificial boundaries that European powers created, those boundaries brought warring groups together, people who never would have had anything to do with each other, into one nation, and this has led to economic instability, civil wars, rebellions, and genocide. And if you take this map of early 20th century imperial imperialism, and if we just look at, say, three imperial powers, if you look at Great Britain, Great Britain controlled territories all the way from Australia to India to Africa to Canada, so really worldwide. The United States of America had influence in many different places. We know that Alaska and Hawaii are now states. The U.S. also controlled the Philippines and several island chains in the Pacific. Then you look at France. Uh, France controlled quite a bit of Western Africa, uh, Madagascar, and France also controlled Indochina, which is now Vietnam. Hegemony. Hegemony is a form of modern imperialism. Today, it's no longer acceptable for one nation to seize another's land. Imperialism has largely taken a new form. Uh, hegemony is one nation dominating another culturally. So they might impose a set of values through education, through media, through fashion, through art, and so on and so forth. The idea is that Western cultures are better than those of the developing world. For example, in many former African colonies, native traditions and languages have completely disappeared. The enemy of post-colonialism is the resource curse. The resource curse is the theory that natural, non-renewable resources such as oil and gold actually hurt a nation's economy. In the 1800s, this happened in Africa when European powers colonized in order to profit from these resources. After independence, many African nations have still continued to suffer from wars over these resources, are dictators exploiting these resources for their own interests whether, rather than the interests of the countries. Colonialism is what many theorists think is happening now. Instead of directly conquering and controlling weaker nations, powerful nations are controlling the weaker nations economically. So developed nations can still exploit natural resources of their former colonies. Uh, they can give economic aid to developing nations in order to give the lender control over the borrower. If you think about it, you have control over whoever you are lending money to. Also, multinational corporations use developing nations for cheap resources and labor. So as you can see, even though we are no longer living in the age of imperialism, where you think about going out and actually conquering uh, another nation and controlling them, we do live in an age of post-colonialism, where we see uh, developed nations controlling developing nations, corporations controlling other nations through neocolonialism and through hegemony.